There's a lot of popular teams out there, but what about the ones that don't often get talked about? Well, this video will show you 5 teams that are still used by a lot of players based on the Abyss usage data. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Arcage, with a special message to let you know that Kakao Games is taking over the publisher duties of this legendary sandbox MMO full of great features like a deep customization system and a massive world that you can explore that's been built over the years. And starting right now, if you ever played Arcage or Arcage Unchained, you can transfer your account to Kakao Games servers and receive the brilliant Hiram Guardian set as a free reward, as well as plenty of other exclusive accessories and gifts. Not only this, but there's a ton of new special events planned for the game, and if you like to start fresh, even new servers are opening up starting from December 2nd. You can transfer or start playing Arcage right now by using the link in the description or pinned comment, and by doing this, you'll also help my channel with future videos. Look, it's no secret that if you watch any of the most popular team comp videos, you'll see things like Walnut going crazy with Hu Tao's charge attacks, Morgana variations popping up left and right, and of course, the newest Raiden's national team that wipes the floor with enemies. But while there's like 5 of these teams that constantly get showcased, there's still a lot of slightly less popular, but at the same time, insanely strong teams that constantly get used by players. And so, to start things off, let's take a look at a team called Reverse Melt, led by Rosaria. Now, while the name itself makes it sound like it's some kind of a secret jutsu, it's really just capitalizing on melt reaction damage with cryo. While the word reverse means it doesn't get the full multiplier for reaction damage, you could otherwise obtain if fire was triggering it. But even then, a variation like Rosaria, Shangling, Bennett, and Kazuha show you just how big the damage can get when you combine everyone's abilities together. And what's even cooler, you can swap out Kazuha with Kaya or just use him instead of the samurai if you don't have him unlocked to basically double down on cryo's particles and reactions. In fact, Kaya often gets compared to Rosaria, so why not just have both of the best worlds? Obviously, there is a chance Shangling or Benny might start triggering melts, but that's not really the worst thing that can happen, as they will still produce huge damage numbers. Finally, when it comes to most popular equipment loadouts for Rosaria, a combination of either 4-piece Noblesse or its 2-sit bonus along with Blizzard Strayer have the highest artifact usage, while her most often picked weapons are Favonius Lance to help her with the burst cost, or Deathmatch to get more critical rate built up, but most of the 5-star options also show up. And as for Shangling, a lot of players made the switch to 4-piece Emblem of Seraph Fate to set back her massive burst cost, and her signature weapon has become the catch, while the rest of the similar options like Favonius Lance or Deathmatch are still used, but not as much as the fishing pole. And when you look at other players' bennies, everyone's gotten him 4-piece Noblesse, which means it's better for Rosaria to go for a double 2-set previously mentioned, and his most popular weapon is either Aquila Favonia for its massive base attack, or any of the energy recharge swords. Finally, it couldn't get more simple with Kazuha, as it's either Iron Sting or Freedom Sworn coupled together with the only set you should be using, which is the Verdescent Venerier. If you look close enough at this team, you can basically tell it's just Child's international team without Child himself, and one character like Rosaria is enough to completely change the team's playstyle and name. Honestly, it's about time Rosaria got the recognition, as the newest feature Double Banners was a good place to obtain her or her constellations, so with even more time, you can expect her to become even more popular. It's been repeated over and over again, but Taser Team is really a force to be reckoned with, especially now that this newest cycle of Abyss has Rift Hounds who are weak to electro damage. And there's so much flexibility when it comes to the team's composition, because while you'll definitely want to use Beto together with Fischl to have a stable energy generation, the other two positions can be either Kokomi or Shing Cho for electro charge reactions, while Sucrose or Kazuha can help with boosting team's damage, and they also capitalize on massive swirls, thanks to electro charge maintaining both Hydro and Electro R at the same time, resulting in both elements getting swirled. And the most popular end result variant you're looking at is this one, where Beto's Burst and Fischl's Raven provide constant damage when they are switched out, so you can then use Kokomi's Burst together with Kazuha or Sucrose and tie in everything together nicely for a beautiful spectacle. And once again, due to Electro Charge Reaction's unique nature, since both elements remain for a brief moment, when you swirl it with Kazuha, you will gain both of the elemental damage bonuses, as you can see here. But for those of you do not have the showcased 5 stars, Taser's original comp still stands strong even today, where Xing Chou and Sucrose are used together with a duo of Electro Buddies. However, the Book Nerd is one of the most high in demand units, so Kokimi can easily replace him. And now that the newest artifact domain is open for business, a lot of people are busy farming up the Husk artifact set, so naturally, a lot of clams will drop, and you should be able to build a decent set out of them, which is why when we talk about the most popular equipment choices, a staggering amount of Kokimi's 
Titans are now built with this newest force set, and it's not that shocking to hear about this, since you can easily achieve maximum damage bubble pops with barely any effort. And as for her weapon, Prototype Amber at first refinement is the number one pick to help her with healing and personal damage performance, but if you were one of those people who got baited with Jade Cutter Banner and ended up with the infamous Donut, well, it is her best in slot weapon. And as for the other teammates, Beto's most popular loadout is Emblem of Severed Fate Force set, along with Serpent Spine, although Wolf's Gravestone and Luxurious Sea Lord aren't that far behind, so it's really these three weapons that define her. Just keep in mind, because Emblem artifacts are great on so many characters, the next choice a lot of players go with is a double two set of 18% attack bonus and Thundering Fury, which, coincidentally, is also how a ton of officials are built, although there is also the four-piece tenacity some have decided to put on the make-believe princess. And at this point, it should be clear that Stringless is her most often picked weapon, while the rest of the lot, like Skyward Harp, Elegy, and Alley Hunter, are secondary picks. Honestly, it's just fascinating to see how this comp is slowly rising to the top, even if all the other ones like Walnut, National, and Morgana are still dominating the charts, but since it doesn't really borrow any of the characters from those teams, you can easily run it alongside them, and well, the results are going to speak for themselves. A lot, and I mean a lot of players seem to be getting hyped about Ito and Goro, who are coming out pretty soon, so a ton of resin was spent farming up the newest Husk of Opulent Dreams artifact set, and in result, Albedo and Noel became the characters of interest to see just how good these artifacts really are. And not only that, but because Albedo's event exclusive Cinnabar Spindle gives a serious shot of steroids to his bloom damage, it's just fun to see those 20k plus numbers appear, while Noel is busy sweeping the floor with enemies. Now currently, the most popular mono Geo variation consists of Noel, Albedo, and Zhongli, with the last spot acting as a flexible choice, although it seems like a lot of players decided Fischl is their go-to choice, since it's pretty easy to utilize one of her passives when there's so many crystallized reactions she can cause with her electro attacks, not to mention her role as an off-field attacker doesn't interrupt the flow for the rest of the team. And you might get tired of hearing about this, but the Geo Rift Hounds on the second part of the floor do matter, because Geo attacks will shred their resistance and in result will make them extremely vulnerable to Geo damage, which is part of the reason why this Mono Geo is getting more traction than usual. So with that all in mind, when it comes to equipment, it's interesting to see that the majority of players still decided to stick with Noel's most popular artifact loadout, which is the Gladiator's 4-piece set, and it probably has to do with the fact the amount of value you gain from the newest Husk set, at least specifically for her, isn't that drastic to be considered as a major upgrade. Also, Retracing the Light 4 set is still relevant for her, but its usage is definitely smaller, partially because it's just easier to obtain gladiator pieces. And as for her weapons, anyone who uses Noel knows that Serpent Spine is her best in slot Claymore, while the secondary choice remains White Blind as a free-to-play option. But when we talk about Albedo, then hands down the best combo is Cinnabar Spindle along with a four set of Husk of Opulent Dreams, and basically that's what everyone is using right now. Finally, for Zhang Li, his weapon choices are evenly split between Black Tassel, Favonius Lance, Deathmatch, and Staff of Homa, but it's important to note that while Tenacity of Millilith Force Set is extremely popular on him, for this team comp, it's actually two-piece Noblesse, along with either Archaic Petra or Tenacity, that help utilize his personal damage. Now, the question is, how many more variations will we see once Ito and Goro show up, since at least Goro will be essential for boosting everyone's defense, while C0 Ito may or may not surpass C6 Noel's damage performance, but maybe from this fact alone, the words Mono Geo will become more relevant, and in result, more people will consider building Noel and the rest of the Geo characters. Still, it's fun to see this comp slowly coming out of its shell, and the second phase of 2.3 is going to be pretty crucial to see how it further develops. Freeze teams have been around for a while now, but it looks like one particular variant became quite popular thanks to several interesting factors. So, the team you're looking at consists of Rosaria, Kokomi, Ayaka, and Kazuha, which all work cohesively to achieve one single goal of keeping your enemies frozen in a small area while a ton of damage is getting dished out. And the beautiful thing about this comp is how satisfying it feels when it comes to unloading the whole rotation, because while a lot of people chose to focus on Kokomi's damage potential when she first debuted, it was easy to miss one of her biggest selling points, which was the insane amount of Hydra application her jellyfish is able to put out. And basically, how it works is that you first want 
want to open up with a cryo attack, switch to Kazuha to swirl it and gain the elemental damage buff, then immediately go to Kokomi, drop her jellyfish, and finally switch your biggest damage dealer, which is going to be Ayaka, who will capitalize on all benefits the team provided to deliver a massive burst attack. And the reason why this works so well together with Kokomi is that she does several things for the team. She applies Hydro consistently, provides a decent amount of healing since fights are localized around the jellyfish, and finally, she boosts everyone's damage when you haven't heard the full force set tenacity of Millilith equipped, and you can go an extra step further by using Thrilling Tails to boost Ayaka's or Rosaria's damage when you swap to them after using Kokomi. It's important to note that Kokomi's burst isn't really used here for damage, and it's utilized to reset the timer of the jellyfish, so you'll often see players activate the burst and then immediately switch off to the actual damage dealer while maintaining the jellyfish benefits. I mean, the burst is still useful for healing if you get beat up badly, but it's really considered more of a utility for this team comp. Also, you can substitute Ayaka for any other cryo damage dealer like Kaya, Chong Yun, or Ganyu, since what really matters here is to unload your cryo damage after all the buffing and debuffing is achieved. And as for the equipment, it's all pretty much the same popular choices you've seen in other teams shown previously, with the two exceptions being Kokomi, where players chose to equip her with Tenacity of Millilith Force Set to get that nice attack boost activated from a jellyfish, as well as Thrilling Tail's Catalyst to boost the next cryo damage dealer you swap to. Finally, for Ayaka, unsurprisingly, her most popular loadout is going to be Blizzard Sphere Force Set, followed by double two sets of one of the 18% attack artifacts in combination with Blizzard Strayer, but that's just probably some players who are still working their way up to get the full Blizzard set. Now, what is fascinating is that a lot of people chose to use Amanoma Kageuchi, and for a good reason too. This is one of the few craftable weapons where it's worth maxing out the refinement because of how insanely useful the passive is, which means ultimately you don't need as much energy recharge when using this sword, but in all other usage cases, Miss Splitter and a Black Sword remain as her top two choices. Overall, it's easy to see why this team gained popularity, since this newest Abyss Cycle introduced Rift Hounds, who are pretty annoying to deal with because of how often these wolves keep avoiding your attacks. So, a freeze team that keeps these puppies under a frozen leash is an easy solution to take care of them. I really tried hard to stay away from any of the already popular comps, but a quick mention has to go out to Raiden's national team, which got renamed as the Rational Team, and one of the variations that seem to work right now is by actually replacing Xing Cho with Mona, so you can use him in other teams like Taser or Hu Tao. The results look decent enough, and while Mona is usually found in Morgana variations, if you don't use that team and want to have Xing Cho utilized elsewhere, she can work as a substitute. Most of the people who use her this way have her equipped with either Wits Sith or Thrilling Tails to boost Raiden's damage, as well as a 4-piece Emblem's Artifact set or the combination of Noblesse along with Hydro or Emblem 2 set. It's pretty clear that the gears of meta are slightly shifting and more and more people are starting to use teams that aren't your typical cookie cutter comps you see everywhere, since from what can be gathered based on the usage statistics, these 5 teams shown today actually make up for a decent amount of players using them. And it's great to see Kokomi and Rosara getting the spotlight, as well as Mono Geo surfacing from its deep sleep, where once it was only some players crazy enough to build a team just for the fun factor alone, but now that the new husk set is out, a lot more players feel inclined to finally try this team for themselves. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video, and I'd appreciate if you could press that innocent like button to help me out. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.